show. This is Live <laughs> from the Table, the official podcast of New York's world famous Comedy Cellar, coming at you on Sirius XM 99. Raw Dog. And on the Laugh Button Podcast Network, Dan Natterman here, uh, co host of Live from the Table, along with Noam, the owner of the world famous Comedy Cellar. Perry Alashin Brand is with us. She's our producer. And on-air personality, it kind of evolved in that direction. Uh, didn't start out that way. <laughs> we also have with us an old Comedy Cellar favorite that hasn't joined us in a while, Nick Griffin. Hello, Nick. Good to be here. Thanks for having Nick me. Nick has been on the Colbert Show. He was actually also on Letterman, I think, nine or ten times. Yeah. And has a podcast on iTunes called Scary Monster. That's right. <laughs> now, what's Scary Monsters <laughs> about, Nick? Scary Monsters is basically me and the comic Lori Palminteri talk about our lives for about 20 minutes, and then we uh, talk about uh, one horror movie but that we both watched that week. I'm a big horror movie fan. I really, really into it. Lori is a comic. She is also, I guess you do, you do a lot of work together with Lori. I do. We go on the road quite a bit. Yeah, she's generally my opening act. She she's is also uh, going to be my opening act. She's opened for me before. What I love about Lori is that she has a car. Well, that's her, one of her best qualities. Oh, my God. Well, that's how it works in the, in the, I would say to young comedians, by the way. Get a car. Get a car is a, is a, is a fine way to, to get work because a lot of, Comics that live in New York don't have a car, and when we're look when we're deciding who we want to open for us, somebody that can give us a ride is certainly a criterion of value. Noam Dorman, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just listening. To, I, I like Lori a lot. She I she used to be on Facebook. My Facebook friends used to write a lot of funny posts on Facebook. Yeah, I, she's a big blogger. But I haven't seen him lately. Maybe the algorithm has uh, changed on me or something, or maybe she maybe she unfriended me. That's possible. Well, I well, do you? St she used to work here, I think, and um, yeah, she used to work. I don't know. You have to talk to Essie about that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, maybe she's holding a grudge, but no, no, no. We we she, for, I, I'm sure it's just uh, Facebook just shows you. I, I'm not on Facebook much anymore, so I'm not either. I don't do Facebook a lot. But she's very funny. I don't know who she is. I'm gonna look Colin her up. Colin told me about her. Colin actually told me specifically came up to me and said, "If you ever need an opening act and you need a car." Uh, Lori's very funny and she's very dependable, and it's kind of been that way for the last five years. I think. That's awesome. Yeah, we're, we're working together uh, in a couple of weeks in in Somerset, New Jersey, at a gig, um, and we we also worked together over the pandemic in in Hartford. So who's who's going to be on the road with Bill Cosby now? Is, is Good. Well, uh, do we want to? Well, let's just organize things. We've got Bill Cosby is out of jail. We've also got the. Uh, that whole big thing that happened in California at the We Spa. Uh, the the the, the, the woman who showed her penis in the. Uh, That's correct. Oh right, yeah. and the ladies said showed their penis. Do you want to, Do you want to uh, get no, into that? No, you said it right. You said her penis. Do you want to get into that story? Because I think that's interesting. And also, we tend to talk a lot about transgender. What's issues. interesting about that, Dan? It's the just a woman showing her penis. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, are you hundred years old? I just, just, didn't to, just, read to, much about just it. to give the background, yeah, Nick. Please. The we I'm not even sure why this is noteworthy, but I'll go with it. Go ahead. The Wee Spa <laughs> in, I guess, Los Angeles, I believe. Correct. It is. Uh, so th th there was a video that went viral with this woman ranting about how a man, she referred to her as a man, uh, she's a transgender woman. So, was, so a transphobic woman was <laughs> ranting. Go ahead. She was ranting. Why, why is there a man in the in the woman's bathroom showing no, his penis to his little girls in there, the underage girls in there? It wasn't there? a bathroom. It was like a... Whatever. It wasn't a bathroom. It was a, a changing, spa. changing room, whatever. No, 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 no. It was not... A, it, they were in a spa. They th The woman took a bunch of her kids or a bunch of children to... I don't think they were all hers... To a spa, like a steam room, I think it was. Uh, whatever it was, there was a penis in there. Well, it matters. <laughs> I mean, the context makes a big difference, I think, The here. fact of the matter is, is it was a designated place for women, and a trans woman was in there with a penis. This this other woman was uh, outraged, and it, the video went viral, and, she, and the woman said, well, I can quote it. Let me Please. hold on a second. Please hold, everybody. I, I have the quote here, which she said in the viral video... Uh, she said, um, she said, I see a dick. 
That lets me know he's a man. He is not a female. He is not a female. He is not a female, sweetie. Girls down there, other women who are highly offended by what they just saw, and you did absolutely nothing. You sided with him. So anyway, that's basically the story. All right. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. What's with this woman? <laughs> You're talking about the, the, the trans woman or the woman, uh, I assume African-American. Yeah, she, I, think she's, I think we saw the video. I think she's a, she's a I saw the, I thought, she, yeah, she's a black woman. I, I, um, I didn't see her, but her, her vocal quality seemed to indicate. Is that politically, I mean. No, it, it was a black woman. I've seen it reported that. It I was. mean, had she said, there's a woman with a penis, I would have said it's a Jewish woman. I mean, different people talk differently. <laughs> If she had said, hey, mamma mia, there's a woman with the penis. Listen, I, I don't know what to say about this stuff anymore because, uh, I, I, you know, Periel always, Periel had convinced me, Periel had convinced me that trans women are women. She, 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 had, she, she knocked it into my brain. I mean, I'm 60 years old. It's hard for me to learn new things. But she told me trans women are women. I'm like, all right, you know what? I've always treated trans women like, I never, I always, I always treated, always, always treated trans women as women. I, even behind their back, I would refer to them as she. This was always easy for me, even you know when no one was doing it. That was always called, that, that level of respect came naturally to me. But I know I didn't think they were actually women. I thought they were trans women. But Periel convinced me that trans women are women. I was just wrapping my brains around that, and I said, Periel, what about that woman with the penis? She goes, I'm outraged. What is she? You can't have a penis in the among the little girls. I'm like, what do you mean? But Periel, trans women are women. She goes, No, no, no. You can't have a penis around young girls like that. It's just not appropriate. I'm like, well, then that's not quite. If you're gonna then quote I say, well, I say, me, that's almost verbatim. No, then I'm no, like, no, well, no. then are you saying trans women are not women? She goes, no, no, they're women. I said, well, then, then you can't have a woman in the no. steam room. No, no, no. And then she got mad. No, <laughs> I said that first of all, trans. Women, I have it recorded, so get it right. Go I, I'm, I'm glad you do. <laughs> trans women are women. Yes. Okay. Yes. There is a difference between biological sex and gender, right? I mean, we can all agree on that. Yes. And I said that I don't think that adult genitalia should be exposed to a group of small adult girls. Adult male genitalia. That's what you said. Fine. Yeah. So. Fine. Yeah. I don't think that. So there are certain women. I think women, that that was. I don't wait. Women. Let me finish. I don't think it's a. Pr I don't think it was a good call on this trans woman's part to go on in this woman's part. Go ahead. My point is clear. Yeah, your point is that you th you say trans women are women. They except are when women. They show their penises. No, that's not. Don't turn it, it into listen, that. Listen to me. I, I I said I said this to you and I and I meant it. You know what? I could even live with it that my daughter saw a penis. Like, do I really think? No, I, I don't mean, think I, a bunch of little girls need to see an adult penis. It's not appropriate. They don't need to see it. But is there actually some harm? Like, you know, if, if my daughter grew up on a farm, she would see huge horse cock in action with sex. Like, like, like and, you know, like, I wouldn't want my daughter seeing it now, but that's the way it is on a farm, right? So, like, a lot, I understand that a lot of this aversion is just cultural. It's probably, it's probably perfectly okay for your daughter to well, see look, look, a trans woman with a penis. Look, it, I'm just saying, but I just wouldn't impose it on people who don't feel that way. Okay, That's really but, but the point yeah. is, like, is... Like you, someone who is not as involved as I am, uh, who, like, you know, I, I wouldn't impose uh, it on no, you. Nick, you said... policies... Uh I think was that, was that against spa policies of uh, no, no because no. in L.A. it's it, illegally they they wouldn't dare they don't nobody's right, quite sure what kind of legal but it's very possible to say that trans women are women and then you can also say that a trans person made a decision that wasn't the greatest decision in the world that doesn't change that trans women are women right let me let me You're pose a hypothetical please do what you're saying it was bad manners more than anything yes that's exactly let, what let I'm me saying. pose a uh, hypothetical that i posed on twitter that nobody responded to you know god forbid you try to have a discussion on twitter <laughs> but i said what if this w woman were actually intersex which is rare but it does happen that sometimes people are born uh, oh. biologically ambiguous so say she had breasts natural breasts not not hormone induced and uh, not you know surgical whatever natural breasts and maybe she had ovaries, and she also had a penis. Now, what? What at that point? Wait, so say it again. So, so I, 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 I dozed off. That's Inter a very shot. In, if, if this woman were intersex, in other, we used to call it hermaphrodite. Now they call it intersex. That's very interesting. In other words, she has both. 
Okay. She's she's biologically both. Yeah. So that she has breasts or he and a penis and maybe ovaries and whatever yeah. else. At that point, should that person be allowed in a woman's locker room? Yeah. I mean, where else? Yes, and you've now tra- changed my mind about the trans woman too. Because if that woman's allowed in a woman's yes. locker room, then the penis is not the issue. You're right. I agree. I changed my mind. I don't know. I, I don't know. You're right, Dan. It's a- By the way, I saw something on Twitter where somebody had, God forbid, had, had mentioned something that Ben Shapiro had said. Uh, but but he, he said that somebody referred to themselves as a non-binary trans woman. Yeah. And... Um, he, they, they made the point, I don't know if it was Ben Shapiro made the point or the person on Twitter, that if you're non-binary, it means you're neither male nor female, right? So how can you be a trans woman? Well, you can be a trans woman and then not really identify with either <laughs> I, I suppose. gender. I mean, so why, non- so if you don't identify with either, either gender, then why are you, why are you trans? Isn't isn't the act of Why are you always trans? trying to find a loophole in this But isn't thing? the act of becoming trans an identification with a gender? Is that the whole point? Not to everybody. Well, right. it could, you know, there's a lot of variations. Like, for example, this person, this woman, she could f- be a trans woman. She could feel comfortable in a female body, but her gender is, 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 is fluid, I suppose. Uh, Dan is really on the money today with this stuff. All well, right, so, so you want your daughter... Seeing a penis. That's the question. An adult penis. If you frame it that way, that's the question. Yeah, that, yes, that is the only that's the reason a woman was upset, isn't it? Yeah. Listen, I do I mean Dan's point about if, if there's somebody intersex, I mean they should be welcome to go. No, but apparently intersex don't have like I, I sometimes I they do, it depends. I, I, th- yeah, but that's w- so few of those. Yeah, and and they, and they, they have like Dwarfed penises. Oh, but what penis, about the those penis people? Non, the penis, nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, they 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 have to be welcome and safe and be allowed to. The go. question is, is how how? I mean, is 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 a small penis you're saying is okay? But a but a but a what we would call Giant a cock. A, <laughs> what's that? Giant horse cock. Yeah, but I mean, would that be in, like an what, erect what, penis what, is what, out? What, erect penis yeah, is out. We can all agree on erect penis is out. No one likes that. <laughs> But you know, is it the is a well? No one brought up a good point. Is a penis traumatizing? No, in fact, <laughs> you know, like I said, you changed my mind. Maybe it's a really good opportunity to explain to kids that not all women, not all women, have vaginas. And moreover, it didn't don't like a lot of primitive tribes. Um, That's maybe, a great point. Do they I mean, have it's their an penis? Opportunity I don't to know. really do that. Right, this this is where it gets. I think where the rubber meets the road is that. Should a place of business be able to operate in such a way that for parents who don't care to have their daughters exposed to a penis, they can have a no penis policy? Or is it that we're in a world now where, listen, if you want to have a daughter, we are just going to say, well, she's just going to have to see male pe- full grown male penises when you take her to. Um, Female things, I have to say, no, I, I, I'm not ready to impose that on. Oh, California wants to live that way. I'm not, I'm not ready to impose that on Mississippi as a matter well, Mississippi of is uh, the first place I'm I would not, impose right, it. But on. I'm going to pretend that, well, you know what? New York maybe should, have, should take care of itself first. New York can't even fucking have an election. In the meantime, they'll look down their nose in the whole country. Um, but I, I would um, not claim that the Constitution of the United States or the Civil Rights Act of 1965, 64, um, meant that a young girl can't go to a sauna or a steam room without seeing an adult penis. I, I, you know, this is just too much. I can't make, call me, you know. Old fashioned. Call me old fashioned. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's a separate issue. Should 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 each establishment have the right to establish their own rules? That's the only issue, really, because then then you when you walk in, you know, if if you know that's if you know their policy is that we we don't make I have rules a solution. about this. Then when your parent takes her daughter there, they no 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 because so trans people 
in some way? What? The, the lady who was... No, she... I didn't... I didn't... I don't... I don't know that there was an outcome. I mean, the guy who worked there was not really engaging with it and not willing to. But I think that the solution... First of all, trans people should be able to go to saunas and steam rooms and that... I feel, you know, extremely strongly about. It. But I think the solution is, is that there's a place for the I was kids. No kids at this. No, no, no. But that's right. That's exactly right. You have a place that's for children and their caretakers, and that's it. Yeah, but and that no, that, their parents can't. You can't have adults with their. You other... ca you can, but I'm saying it's children only, so you don't run into that issue. Children only. I mean, no parents. We, Okay, a care, whatever. What yes. A trans person with a penis has well, a child. Well, then you cross that bridge when you get to it. No, I don't know. You can't cross that bridge. I listen. So I, I, I told think you some problems have no solution. I think Noam's solution may be the best. Every place is free to establish their own rules. No. With regard to no, nudity, like nudity is, you know, is something that maybe the government shouldn't be legislating. I, I think the country would be infinitely better off if we allowed communities to make their own rules about a lot of things. I think. I think. I know this is sound terrible. But I did a lot of thinking in the last month about what would happen because it looks like it might be possible that Roe versus Wade was overturned or or uh, cut back, and I think actually it would it would be a good thing. Oh my God! I my prediction is that virtually no state would outlaw abortion, even the states that claim they would outlaw abortion, just like Obamacare. Everybody's going to repeal Obamacare, repeal Obamacare. And then when Trump became president, it was time to repeal Obamacare. They couldn't repeal Obamacare because people wanted it. But we, we live in an age of oral contraception, oral, uh, you know, uh, what do they call them? A plan B? A, a, abortion. There's a, there's plan a word. B. Yeah, but there's a word for... Contraception. No, the, it's not contraception. There's a word for a pill that causes abortion. So, so the abortion pill. Yeah, there's there's a scientific word. For it. I can't think of it. So we live in an age Pilius of these, abortion not, uh, We live in an age of these abortion pills number 1. Number 2, people travel very easily. Number 3, I don't think many uh, states would actually outlaw abortion. Number 4, Ireland. Ireland, the most catholic place on earth, uh, legalized abortion and they're infinitely better off having legalized it through a, a democratic process than having it imposed on them. Imagine and otherwise, and by the way, science is not the friend of Roe versus Wade. Believe me, when Justice Blackman wrote uh, Roe versus Wade, he didn't know that three-month-old fetuses were, had the hiccups and sucked their thumbs and perhaps felt pain. They didn't know that stuff at the time. So science is not going to solve this. Science is only going to make it dicier and dicier. There is no actual... I mean, the liberal position on this, and I'm, you know, I, I'm pro-abortion, but the is very akin to the idea of a soul. Like, one month, to when does it become a human life? What do we mean by become a human life? It kind of means, like, when does it have a soul? Right? Well, liberals don't believe in a soul, but that's kind of what they're backing into here. A six-month-old fetus is different than a one-day-old baby? No, of course it's not. Because you can take the six-month-old fetus out and raise it. and until, you know, it's, So if you start to look at it, it doesn't hold together. So wouldn't it be better... To not have this issue poisoning us, us, poisoning us every election from now until the end of the United States of America is not going away. But if, if states could decide for themselves, we'd be done with this already. And yeah, I don't know how to weigh that against the inconvenience of a woman in Mississippi that might have to travel to get an abortion or... You know, who got raped by her father. But it's good for yeah. business at the cellar because when she's in New York getting an abortion, yeah. she stops and sees a comedy show. But you understand that that this was forever, this is forever, this abortion issue in every single election, every single Supreme Court nomination, it, it's forever. And I actually think, where's he supposed to sit? Nicole. I actually think it's over, I know it's easy for me to say, but I, I really believe that if, Roe versus, if the worst happens and Roe versus Wade is overturned, the worst will not happen. I think you're not going to go back to back alleys and clothes hangers, that's for sure. Do you know what the abortion laws are in places like Alabama and Mississippi right now? Yeah, of course. There's le every state has legal abortion because that's the law. But not every place actually has abortion. Well, so, some states have fewer abortion clinics, but, if, but that, that only cuts my way. That means that the, there would be negligible effect. If they, are, if they already don't have many abortions then overturning Roe versus Wade would actually know, not have much effect on something that's already not happening, right? You know it would be a really novel idea? 
What? Is to just let women decide what they want to do yeah, with their that, bodies that, and not have the fucking government mandate what we can do and what we can't well, do. That's what that's what most states would do. But, you you know, you, you, the problem with like if my grandfather gets me pregnant, it shouldn't be difficult for me to abort that fetus yeah, if I fine, want Carrie. to. There, listen, there, there are two there are two liberal uh, takes on the abortion issue. One is the people who realize that this is a difficult issue. And, and the other, which is the Periel view, which just pretends that there's only one living entity here to be considered so that you would say that a nine-month-old fetus, if it's a product of rape, should just be abortable. And, and Don't do that because that's not what I'm saying. Well, if then you, but then what, what are and you saying then? First of all, I think that if you're going to have this should a nine month old fetus uh, that's a product be abortable? Don't make me answer a I horrible that's, that's question. Point. No, I, because it's not a fair question, and you can't not frame a fair the, question. No, because you can't frame. Do you know that? Do you know the statistics of of abortions that are late term? Do you know how infinitesimal that number is? Most abortions take place before six weeks. So to ask me, like, six weeks, women don't usually know they're pregnant till after till around six weeks. I mean, sorry, not six weeks. Well, it, whatever it what, is, whatever, saying, whatever it is, I'll, I'll look up the exact number. No, I mean, of course, like you're gonna ask like the most horrible yeah, question yeah, that's, in that's the, the way, world, that's and way, that's how you're yeah, gonna. Do, weren't you philosophy majors? That's how philosophy works. Okay, you ask the, a writing. You, you ask major. the difficult questions. Um, but the, the point well, is, I mean, I'm not Michel Foucault over here. Okay, I'm my just point saying is this. there is a. It is very difficult to distinguish between Monday, it's just a, a, an entity that has absolutely no legal rights or we have no concern about it. And Tuesday, if you kill it, you're going to go to jail the rest of your life, perhaps the electric chair. It is it is it is right. pretty much incumbent on a thinking, smart, liberal person. I agree with to, you, but to, I also don't grapple. think that you should say things like "kill it" okay. because it's totally inflammatory. What and mean, what do you mean? What, what, what do you mean? Kill it is no. Lie, I mean it? when you start calling abortion murder and kill it. And by the way, I think it's. You know what this reminds me of? Can I tell you a story? This is I have a friend of mine. I mean, when she's Rob, a friend of mine is. You met him. Is, I don't want to say his name on the air, but you met him, and uh, he's a vegan. And I was questioning about all this vegan stuff. And I'm like, okay, you, you won't eat a non-fertilized egg. Why won't you eat a non-fertilized egg? He said, because, you know, factory farming, they treat the chickens. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, okay, what if, uh, what if you raised the chicken? And, <laughs> and you, knew, you knew exactly how the chicken was raised. Would you eat the, the chicken then? He's like, no, absolutely not. I wouldn't eat the chicken then because, uh, Bob, and he has, he has some reason because it would be normalizing the idea of the chickens, and that would, and that would. I said, what about milk? You had a cow. And you're like, and you, no, I wouldn't do it. Like he had, he had an answer for everything. I said, okay, now what about abortion? He goes, it's a woman's right to choose. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 he had, like, he had no qual. Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't drink milk. But, the, but he so internalized your view. Like, don't say kill that. That to him, you're using milk, inflammatory milk. language, no. and it colors Perry the L. subject. It's not inflammatory language. It's not murder. I, to have I didn't say murder. You said kill. Yeah. Killing and murder are not the same thing. If you have a fetus with a heartbeat and brain waves and you make it cease to exist, cease to, what, what fucking word do you want me to use? Abort's fine. All right. Terminate. Terminate. Uh, yeah, but abort doesn't. By the way, do you think it's curious that most of the people that are so no. anti-abortion also believe in the death penalty? Uh, no, I don't think it's curious. Abort is not. <laughs> Abort is not the right word because abort is skirting the legal issue, which is that this is alive and you have decided that it's not human and therefore you Who can, has decided that it's not human? Well, you say women should be able to decide for themselves. They and, should. And you, up until when? I don't know. Why don't you tell right. me? So, no, uh, really. Well, I'll tell you. I will okay, tell you. Go ahead. I'll tell you exactly what. Let communities decide for themselves that's we live in a democracy let communities decide because there is no right answer if i mean if there's any right answer here it would be well the most natural answer would be like well how do we know when an old person is dead when his heart stops or when his brain stops reading right so the natural thing we well, okay well that i guess is the definition of life so when a fetus's brain starts comes online and when a fetus heart starts beating 
prima facie, that seems like it's alive then. So once there's a heartbeat. That's very early. Okay, so, you know, we're not going to obviously get to the bottom of this. No, no, we're going to settle the abortion issue. And we've had this discussion before, and I always find it interesting, but we do have other things to discuss. And, of course, um, uh, Nick has to be on stage in in 10 minutes. I don't think he needs the headphones. He can hear it. You can hear everybody, right? Do you need headphones, Robbie? I need headphones. Go ahead. I'm deaf. Go ahead. We have with us. A very special, a new member of the comedy. Se- uh, Nick has to. I'm sorry. That's Nick. it. He barely talked. Come on. What's well, because he barely talked. I, why could? Why could that be? Right. <laughs> well, we were talking, Nick. Well, okay, before you go, Nick, oh, what's your opinion on trans? What's your opinion on abortion? Just. <laughs> 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 yes. Trans women or women? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, of course. Take well, it easy. Yeah. Just asking. And uh, I feel um, like you're and, setting uh, me up for a career <laughs> plummet. <laughs> <laughs> Open and up some uh, spots for some young comic. Ab- abortion, uh, yay or nay? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Got him on record. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Am I good? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. You're so, good. You so you, what, what room are you before? What one of the rooms? Because it's like a three ring circus here at the uh, Comedy Cellar. I'm at the McDougal. Uh, the Comedy Cellar Classic. The original. Yeah. The original. The classic. Good. Okay. Enjoy. Have a good set. We don't say break a leg in the comedy world. We say we say man yeah, whatever. Uh, Rob Feld is with it. Rob Feld is sort of a new addition in the comedy seller community. Well, I have one more question, Rob, not, not, Nick. You say trans women are women, right? Oh, no. Does that mean if you if you meet <laughs> does that mean if you meet a woman at the at a bar, you don't care whether they're trans or not? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. It was more like yes. <laughs> all, right. all right. All right. Well, look, we're all entitled to be attracted to different types of women. Some are attracted yes. to. Women, uh, petite women, some like a taller gal. I, I, I don't mind a big girl myself. Uh, some some uh, f- fancy a woman with a penis. That's fine. We, we know people in that category. Rob Feld is with us, unrelated to the previous discussion. Um, he is a new member of the Comedy Cellar community. He's been here like every day. Can, can, I, can I just say before Rob said, just on this whole, we can't help joking because we're I'm like a I'm like a sixth grade boy inside. But let's just reiterate, nobody wants to be disrespectful to, to trans people. These are tough issues. If, if, if Periel was to the, to the right of me on a young girl seeing a penis, you know that these are not uh, I- easy issues for anybody. So let's, you know. I've seen some penises here at the cellar. Uh, or rather, I should say I've seen some penises belonging to comedians here at the cellar that are pretty scary, even for somebody like a grown person like myself. Listen, so I think we solved the trans question in the sauna. There should be, it has nothing to even do with trans, frankly, the more I think about it. There should just be a sauna for children. And, and that's it. <laughs> that there are no adult, no <laughs> naked adults. Heard, like, full stop. No right, naked on, adults. Serious, no. I'm what's, being what's your, dead serious. No, come on. I'm being dead serious. They don't need to see any naked adults. This is adults. like Ricky Gervais level irony going on here. You lost right? me. You lost they me. don't need to see a vagina or they don't need to see any adult penis or vagina that doesn't belong to their parents. It's not appropriate. Full, full stop. Full women stop. women can go all naked. No. Oh, I'm, come on. No. I, I think, I think Rob, trans women are women. Wait, what about in the mikvah? Don't the Orthodox Jewish women all go naked in the well, mikvah? Let's not get started with that. Rob Feld, everybody. For the third time or fourth time. Who's, who's keeping track of how many times I've tried to introduce this man? <laughs> Rob Feld yes, sir. is a journalist and filmmaker currently working with Duke University professor Chris Bale. Is that how you pronounce it? Bale. Yeah, t- put your headphones on so you know to speak in the mic. because uh, um, On a documentary series that debunks, that's another word we hear all the time, that and full stop, the myths around how social media impacts political polarization and the free exchange of ideas. First of all, let me just say, that it, Rob is, as I've said before, is sort of a fixture now here at the. He's like Stephen Calabria. He just kind of here every day. Well, he's trying. He's trying to network. Um, and I, for one, enjoy his presence. I find him to be a agreeable sort of individual. He, by the way, is a big fan of the tiramisu here. It's good tiramisu. Rob felt. Why are you here all the time? Well, I'm doing this documentary. I'm Talk, talking to the mic, Rob. Into the mic, You're my friend. Into guy. the Come mic. On, uh, I have no chance making a movie if I can't find the microphone. 
Uh, doing this documentary, I'm incorporating uh, comedians, using them as anthropologists within uh, the story. And Noam has been incredibly generous, letting me kind of have free reign roaming w around. What is an anthropologist exactly? Well, the ones who are going to observe and uh, comment on uh, society. And, oh, okay. you know, I could get guys with elbow patches out of Columbia, but the comedians are a lot more fun, I think. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Wait, so what is this What is this documentary? I mean, I know I get in the introduction, I sort of described it, but can you describe it in, in, in simpler yeah, terms? What, what this documentary is trying to get at? Well, it's trying, you know, it's trying to look at what's the actual effects of how social media is and is not affecting the, the truly toxic state of our, of our national discussions. You know, there's a lot of uh, discussion around algorithms and bots and stuff, and I'm working, so Chris Bale, who's written this book called uh, uh, Breaking the Social Media Prison, um, he's at Duke, and he runs uh, the polarization lab there, and they literally study polarization. Uh, and they're <coughs> data scientists and social scientists. Uh, and so they, they scrape Facebook and Twitter and look at what's actually happening and how people are interacting with the platforms um, and trying to see, you know, are, if you change the algorithms, which is so much of the discussion right now around legislation, if we got rid of these algorithms, would it, in fact change people's experiences? Would we all become much more accepting of each other because we wouldn't be in these silos of information? Right? There's this idea that we have, if you're on the left, you have, you're in a left-wing information silo. And all the information you're getting is just confirming what you already believe. And you see no argument from the other side. And if you log into Facebook and you're on the right, all you're seeing is right-wing information, and it's just going to confirm everything that you already believe, and there's no cross-pollination. So if people are just in different silos, how are they ever going to understand each other? Um, so Chris Bell runs this experiment where he takes a broad cross-section of Americans, signs them up for this study, uh, and tracks their social media usage uh, and watches what happens as he sends them bots, basically, that bring information that's outside of their presumed bubbles to them. And uh, what actually happened was counterintuitive. Rather than forming a better understanding of each other, they actually started to hate one, one another more. So you got these people who would start to polarize even further. If you were on the left, you went a little further left. If you were on the right, you went uh, much or relatively further right um, and just started to hate the people on the presumed other side of you. Who has a vested interest in that, though, right? In like, well, no one does. It, I mean, well, I mean, they're controlling it, right? Like, Facebook is controlling the algorithm. They are, but what actually the thing is, is that the algorithms aren't having the effect that we think they're having. So, the algorithms aren't actually preventing people from seeing other other bits of information. The odd statistic is that. Um, if you are getting your news predominantly online, you're actually seeing a broader breadth of info than if you're not, but you will just choose what is the most inflammatory to look at. So they would take, let's say, if you're on the left, they will send you everything from David Brooks to uh, Jones, you know, uh, InfoWars guy. Are you going to read the David Brooks? No, your eyes going to go to the InfoWars stuff and light up and go, oh my God, those people are attacking my identity, they're crazy, uh, and I hate them. And you get pushed further into your corner um, and get better at defending your position and talking points, and you just start to view the entire other side of the spectrum as bad and evil and terrible people. And the same thing happens on the right. So you know, the great statistic is that uh, of all of in, in Twitter, that only 6% of Twitter users are creating 73% of all political tweets. And that 6% are the craziest, the most extreme uh, of all of them. So then we look at Twitter, and we look at all the political so, you know, supposed conversation happening, and it's really being created by 6%. And we look at that, and we go, oh my god, everyone's crazy, and everyone hates each other, and everyone's really extreme, uh, when in fact, the vast majority of Americans are a, not political to begin with, don't like talking about politics, and the vast majority of social media users are not posting about politics at all. And the vast majority of Americans are quite moderate. But I have a question. How do we know the most extreme are actually the most crazy? Like, you could go back various times in history, the most extreme positions 
proved to be the the, the wisest decision. Uh, well, uh, we decision. can say fine. We can say that the most extreme positions are the most uh, the most vocal and the most uh, histrionic that we're going to see online. Right. It, maybe maybe uh, Infowars will prove to be <laughs> right on the money. Well, I I think that no, but like like for instance, it, uh, it's it's not it doesn't. I'm sorry, Dan, but it, it doesn't. Like I, I'm making all these kind of flippant jokes about the trans thing, mm. but I said it earlier, and I and I th it was the most seriously meant thing I said. I'm quite aware that much of what's difficult about all this for me is simply that I'm 59, 58 years old and, and born in my generation. So and this is jarring, but I'm totally open to the fact that 30 years from now, this may be run of the mill. Nobody will care. People will not really. I mean, I, I can't believe they'll ever not notice that somebody has a penis, but they'll like like the parents won't care that much, and and we'll look back and say, well, like, the, the the extreme people were absolutely right. It was fine. They just couldn't get used to it. You know what I mean? Well, the problem though is that yeah. you can't have that conversation online, yeah. right? You can sit here with your podcast and you can talk to your friends and have this conversation, and no one's going to pounce on you and start sending you death threats, yeah. right? But if you try and have stake out a middle ground position online or have a complex discussion about gun control. Yeah, about anything, gun. right? Well, what, 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 uh, so you've been talking to comedians, you, you kind of uh, staked yourself out here at the comedy set. What have you learned from talking to comics about all of this? Well, I mean, you know, I think the other great, uh, my great insight here was that you know, the ability to have open dialogue is really important to comedians to be able to uh, express ideas, exchange ideas, throw something crazy out there, have it bomb, but survive, <laughs> you know, not induce hatred from people. And, you know, watching, listening to people uh, sit around the tables at the cafe and talk, you know, half, they're all concerned about getting canceled for something they said. Some are saying, you know, I'm saying things maybe you don't really believe, but I'm, you know, kind of signaling so I get some audience. Um, and, uh, you know, others, they test jokes and they test them with each other and they need that freedom to, uh, express a, an idea and let it, you know, pass or not. And so comedy, as I'm watching it, you know, is, is a natural democracy. You know, it gets voted up or voted down by the audience, but, you know, you come back the next day and you do something else. And, you know, we've got to be able to have that conversation or have those conversations in a democracy. And if the most extreme, loudest voices are silencing the vast majority of the country because it's not worth anyone's effort or emotionality, you know, anything to, to get shouted down online, get death threats, have your friends hate you, then, you know, democracy's over. So right. the, idea of, the idea of Professor Bale's book is to try and empower the vast majority of people more in the center to speak to be if not be afraid to speak or be you know more willing to uh, because otherwise what's going to happen is is what's happening now which is the most extreme voices uh, take over the conversation and who has you know for me you know the, these comedians have such great uh, observations and it's so personal what's Dan's best point. observation Dan has no observation well I have had a joke I did just I mean I've been try I've been working with it I may have to not use it anymore because it just it it gets big laughs Half the time, and moderate laughs at best. The other half of the time, and a joke that only works half the time is a joke that has to be eliminated. But mm. but I, the last time I did it, it got real. It got like like uh, gasps of horror. And the, <laughs> and, the, and the joke is, it does. It's not even politically. It, it in no way, shape, or form is politically a political joke. I talk about going back in time and talking to George Washington and telling George Washington. That I'm from the future, and in the year 2050, white people will be a minority of the U.S. population. And Washington says, "Really, we're going to have that many slaves that white people will be a minority oh of the my. U.S. population?" Now, now, th th there's there's nothing that I've said there <coughs> that's wrong. You know, Washington probably would have that reaction. I mean, it's certainly I'm not advocating slavery. I'm not. Whether or not you think well, I thought you were. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm simply saying that in George Washington's world, in the year 1770, whatever, the idea of white people being a minority would be so absurd that the only way he would be able to 
perceive it is that there were. He'd sooner believe that women would be in the locker room with with penises than he would do that in But Periel gasped just like the, like the person in your audience. Right. So so well, why? I, what did you read in it? Because I've seen, I've seen him tell the joke a few times now, and it's true. Some people key into it, and others seem to misread it somehow. What were you tracking when he said it? You just don't like a white person saying the word slave or, or making, li- I don't know, you know. Well, I think that that's certainly part of, I mean, for lack of a better uh, term, sort of like the brilliance of the joke is that it's a white person telling it, right? Like, I think it would be much less shocking coming out of somebody else's mouth. What is shocking about it? Well, it's a joke, right? So it's supposed to be funny, right? So the idea is that it's funny to have so many slaves that what that's the only... I mean, that's am, the only, I, the only, am I explaining this joke? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that it's a funny joke because you don't see it coming, but it's... Right, but it's, it's scandal. I mean, the thought of it is scandalous. Right, but, but it's not a... Uh, a it, as Dan says, it's not a joke that it, that's has a political no, angle. I don't, I don't think it is, but it's it, still it, a scandalous it, thought. If anything, it's about how closed-minded and racist George Washington is that he couldn't conceive of. Yeah, but you went, <gasps> because it's because I you mean, love George Washington. Yeah. I, I'm <laughs> such a patriot. Well, anyway, so so the point so somewhere, is... Uh, before, somewhere in her house, she has like a helmet, and it just, like, this is the thing about Periel. I, I wish that, <laughs> we, should have, we should have a show one day where you have a whole week to come up with opinions that you have that we don't know without even asking you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like opinions that you might have that I actually have to, like, you understand? Like, I feel like, like we've done this so, some Something that I would not expect. Because as I see it, it's just like you download the daily woke opinions. You know what? And this position that you have is such a load of fucking crap. Okay, Dan, so like, go, ahead, I, go ahead about your joke. But anyway, the, the, <laughs> the, large, the point is, is that I... I going to, I think, just stop doing it because I can't take a chance that one out of every three or four times I tell it, people are going to recoil in horror. Uh, it's just not worth Is it. Is that why you stopped having sex? <laughs> yeah, <no>. um, <laughs> so, you know, well, in, what are in they a recoiling sense, at? What do you, what I don't know what they're recoiling at. Just they don't like the word. Just like my joke about Mexico, where I like, whoa, you know, whoa, <laughs> where I say the word Mexican, and just the word Mexican, people didn't like it. Um, so, you know, tell the joke, cause this is the, really the, not joke, about the joke is about where, like, I talk about how, um, you know, learning foreign languages, uh, is it, le- learning Braille. No, I say, well, my friend asked me, why don't Americans learn foreign languages? And I say, be probably the same reason people that can see don't learn Braille and learning Braille would actually be more practical because you might go blind one day, but you're not going to go Mexican. So, so, so but this is the best thing about this joke. I'm, when America's got talent. They made him change it to, to German. To German, yeah. Like he could say he could same joke, which is not as funny for some reason. But he, like, it's so stupid. They they made him change it from German because somehow to say Mexican was touchy. Right. The exact same joke. You're not going to turn German. Is somehow and yeah, and the punchline is Heidi Klum was German, got offended by the joke. <laughs> or, at least, or, hilarious. or at least she claimed to get offended by it. But in any case, She's an idiot. Um. The point being is that yeah, there's certain jokes that are just like ah eh, fuck it, I don't want to deal with the you know the reaction, and I and and I'm you know I'm not going to stand in the raw wind and declare I'm right. There's nothing wrong with this joke, and I'm going to say it. And, right, right. You know, what, what year did Mel Brooks write the producers? Like when did all when did all the Jewish written Hitler jokes bloom? Not that long after the Holocaust, right? Sixties. In the 60s, 15 years after maybe even, I don't even know if the full horror of the Holocaust was known in 45. It probably took a few years even. 1967. Even. All right. So, so let's say, let's say, let's say it's 20 years, 20 years after the Holocaust, Mel Brooks was, was doing campy send ups of Hitler. Right. And this is considered. Okay. Well, there was also Hogan's Heroes, but that wasn't Hitler. That was yeah, the, the Luftwaffe. The, the, so what was That's tw- kind of amazing? What was 20 years like? Yeah, it's just like we're so touchy now. We're just so touchy. Yeah. No, I you know, I totally agree with. But you also Mel that. Brooks is Jewish. I mean, may, I, I don't know whether that would have flown. Well, what, what if you were Mexican and you told that joke? So just it half an hour fun. ago, Hassan Minaj is downstairs and he's telling a joke about. Don't a, tell his joke on the about being in the Gulf yeah. and uh, related uh, the um, the Indian population to the 
Mexican workers in the United States. And the joke went over quite well. But um, but he can do that. Because he can he, do that. Yeah. Well, there's something to that. I so guess. that's what I'm saying, though. That's exactly what I just said. <laughs> yeah, but he said it. You know, I understood it. Ah. <laughs> so, so, no, you're, so, it is what you said. So, Rob, in terms of your... I mean, amplifying you, what you said. Don't be so... Do you think... Um, I mean, how would you relate that, my... my Joke, if 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 at all, to what you're trying to say in your documentary, or is it, or is it unrelated? I mean, I don't see, I don't think that particular, you know, joke is related. But I think the issue of can you know well-intentioned people have a rational discussion in an online environment, as opposed to sitting across from each other at a table over a beer or something, you know, something that is a even a moderated conversation between people. Uh, comes out very differently. You miss body language, you miss inflection, you miss intention, and so you can you put that online, and you know. But I don't think the intention of people online is to have <coughs> an intelligent sort of back and forth, open conversation. Well, it depends. Most I think most people who end up having those conversations, that's true. However. Uh, there are plenty of people who, and many of them are in Christopher Bale's book, um, posted just some kind of benign thought about, there's one example of someone who, she's a woman, her father was a police officer, she grew up in a house with, uh, with guns, people who were trained in guns, he was a New York cop, um, and uh, there was some post she was responding to online and said, you know, my, my husband um, ha- goes for target practice with a handgun, you know, not saying there should be no gun laws, not saying there should be no gun control, but just, you know, my husband goes and does target practice. And all of a sudden, this onslaught of people just saying the most horrendous you know, things to her and wishing her death and a death on her children. Um, and she was just trying to have a rational discussion. But uh, they then get attacked. And so it's not the forum for those discussions. You're right. So most people, in fact, do not engage, but they then cede the ground to the most extreme positions. And we, all this to say and, yeah. that we misunderstand each other. And and so what's what's the result of all this? I mean, the result of all this is, is what, what are the real world ramifications? I think the real world ramifications are the, this, this, this sense that we have of each other that everyone is the enemy. That those people who disagree with me are the enemy. And I see them in the most extreme form. So you stop seeing people as the moderates they probably are. You just wash everybody with this extremist view. So I assume if I'm on the left that everybody on the right is QAnon. And if I'm on the right, I assume that everybody on the left is Antifa or, you know, the most extreme versions, Bernie Sanders or, you know, whoever your, you know, favorite, you know, evil Republican is, right? Because that's how we see everybody now. They're just evil. Now, that's interesting. It's Antifa, not Antifa? I have no idea. Antifa. Because I heard, Antifa. I heard somebody, uh, a, a, a scientist on Sam Harris's podcast, I said, he's calling it, saying polygy, pol- polygamy instead of polygamy. <laughs> <laughs> You ever hear polygamy? No, that's not well. Correct. Antifa gets anti-fascist, right? So yeah. Uh, what was got, oh, okay. Okay. So uh, so let's get to uh, so Cosby. so what you're saying is that if I want to put Bill Cosby on now, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna get it. You now. might get a letter. <laughs> that might happen. Can we talk about that? Bill Cosby. Well, yes. Bill Cosby is out of jail apparently uh, on a technicality. Apparently, as I, as I understand it, and I didn't read it meticulously, but. I think he made it. The prosecutor made an agreement with him like ten years ago that if you testify at a civil trial, we will not prosecute you criminally. Something like that. And How do they have the authority to do that? I guess they do. Prosecutors make these kinds of deals. And I didn't read it, but I, I, I something of that nature. He, no were, one is saying he didn't do it. They're just saying the prosecutor made a deal. He did not respect the deal. Therefore, the the trial has to be thrown out. But wasn't there also something about uh, bringing in uh, so many? Um, so many other accusations of the same crime, which don't have to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. In other words, they started bringing in all these other women who said that Cosby did the same thing, but obviously none of these cases were adjudicated. So I, I think that that's part of the issue as well. Well, that may be. But anyway, Cosby is out and... Um, and defiantly proclaims his innocence after being sprung from prison via, re- via does Twitter. Does it say the reason he was, he was sprung via Twitter? 
I can find. Did, you, did did it say why he I ha- mean that why he got out? Yeah, hang on. Well, I think special I, thanks to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court for upholding the rule of law. That's re- um, but of course, apropos of Twitter, people of course many people are outraged that he got out, and they're saying, well, this is why women don't come forward, and um, I mean, this and that, is the, just uh, that the beyond. that the deck is stacked against women. And some have made the point that you know this is an example of wealthy people getting uh, getting away with crimes. Um, oh, I see. He he relied on the prosecutor d- decision not to charge him, so then he freely gave incriminating statements. Wait, say that again. Sorry. They had told him they weren't going to charge him, and I guess in return for that, he 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 gave up his Fifth Amendment right and incriminated himself uh, in some way. Rather than, he, I mean, he made it. They made a deal. I think Dan is right. They basically made a deal with him, and they didn't um, live up to it. And that's you know, that's sixty Cosby accusers. It's a lot of accusers. Yeah, I mean, I mean that is. I mean, this is really. He's eighty three years old. Well, I don't think, look, I think they got some measure of justice. I mean, uh-huh. he was humiliated. His career is over. Well, we'll see uh, about that. I suspect. He, he's universally thought of as, by most people, as a rapist. And he's a broken down old man. I don't I, think it's I don't fair know if to that's say that. justice. Two years. Yeah, I mean, this now. guy's going to well, go on and live in his fucking mansion, living the life of Riley. Well, I'm not. It's not perfect justice, but I don't think it's fair to say they got no justice at all. It's oh, I mean, if you got raped by Bill Cosby and he went to prison for two years and like you've been fucked up your entire life, like I would say that's not really even close. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm, I'm coming with, from I'm a position of where two years in What'd prison. What did you say, no? I'm with you on this. Oh, I'm coming from the position where two years in prison is, uh, you know, is not something I could handle. But, but I understand that that's not the case for everybody. You but would probably do well. You'd make friends. You'd make people laugh. No, I'd you, probably hang your myself. your law background? I'd probably <laughs> hang myself the first night. <laughs> Much like that character in The Shawshank Redemption. You know, remember that at the beginning of the movie? Look, the, 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 uh, in a, in a, these um, reversals are very, very important for the integrity of the justice system. They have, they have to do these things. Just like they have to let people go when they get evidence improperly, and um, and that's just the way it is. But it's it's a shame. Yeah, this guy <coughs> was. If anybody belongs in prison, it's him. I mean, the but, justice system. But that should not. That's a separate issue from whether or not they did the right thing. I mean, I, ideally, you should be able to say he deserves to be in prison. But the justice system had no choice but to let him out. That's that's what we say when the cops search somebody without a warrant, find evidence of a crime, and then we we say, well, yes, he, he was a murderer. But the justice system has to respect warrants. That's just the way it is. That that's the way our system works, and it works to the benefit of all of us. Otherwise, they would run roughshod over our rights all the time. Well, they do. No, they don't. Really? Tell that to all the innocent people who are rotting away in prison. No, there are not a lot. There are innocent people. As, as a matter of fact, there's a really amazing story that Laura um, Emily Bazelon wrote today that involves her sister, Laura, who's a friend of this show, uh, uh, getting a guy out. I mean, the way she wrote the story, it was that he was innocent. They don't really know that he's innocent, but certainly the, the, the conviction was not... Um, there, there, were, there were a lot of serious issues with the conviction such that he deserved to be let out. Um, there are innocent people in prison. Of course there are. There always will be, no matter what the system is. But way fewer in America than in most countries, I would be pretty sure of. I mean, I don't know about that. All I know is that the fact that there wasn't some way to keep Bill Cosby in prison is pretty astonishing. Well, you're a, you're a very results-oriented and justifies the, the means person. Okay. Well, I think I but, can live uh, with that. Um, we do have rights in this country. You Some people well, have the fact more is rights he, than others. He wouldn't have been in jail at all were it not for our dear friend Hannibal Burris, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's, mo- it's more justice than they would have gotten were it not for our, for our man Hannibal. Well, I mean, that goes back to, you know, rich and powerful men getting away with um, doing whatever they want. Rob Feld, you say what? If anything. I Maybe you have no opinion. <laughs> I have no opinion. 
I you mean, have no opinion as to whether or not Bill Cosby should be in prison? Well, of course he should be in prison. Okay, That's then you have really an question. opinion. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, we, we do, Gnome's right. We have a justice system, and it, you know, it's supposed to serve everyone. It does not always, but you've got to, you know, you've got to follow the letter of the law as it, you know, as we can. Put him in fucking jail. That's what I say. I mean, like I said, I think there is something oh, to... No, just I mean, you can't have vigilante justice. You can't. There is something... Listen, to... you know what? Sometimes you do make decisions like that when you have just an overwhelming abundance of proof and evidence. This guy raped 60 well, women. Him. Well, and then he no, should... He's charged with raping one woman. Well, that's enough to fucking get your balls cut off, too, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Listen, I, I, you know, I'm, I, am, I am quite a civil libertarian on this. I was... I mean, I, the only thing I ever was disappointed with Lara Bazelon on is that she wouldn't come with me on the, on the obvious... Uh, there's obvious issues in the Chauvin trial. Is that, you know, it, it, the notion that a guy... This is, again, not with regard to whether you think he's innocent or guilty, but the fact that a juror was wearing a T-shirt about his guilt prior to the trial is disturbing on its face. Nobody should ever be tried by a juror who is already wearing a T-shirt about the fact that you're guilty. And it's disappointing that, that so many people, you know, who, who, like I said at the time, like, I know tons of people who were ready to defend KSM and his right to a trial and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, the guy, the guy, the 9-11 mastermind. Or uh, Abu Jamal, the, the guy, I think in Pennsylvania, you know, cop killer. But for whatever reason it is, with Chauvin, y you were not supposed to say that there's actual civil liberties issues here. Listen, I turn into a fascist when it comes to these yeah, things. Well, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I don't be surprised if they overturn the Chauvin verdict. Do not be surprised because there's a lot of things. That they might retry him and then, and then get him fair and square. So why can't they retry Cosby? They can. They can? Yeah, sure they can, yeah. They can? Are they going to? Yeah, he's not acquitted. He's just a uh, mistrial or whatever they call it. Outrageous. They, they, what a fucking waste of time and money. And, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Put this guy in jail. Throw away the key. Let him go rot in a cell somewhere. I don't, I don't know if they'll be able to retry him without the I'll those statements him. that they relied on to convict him. That Those won't be admissible, but they're certainly they're free to retry him if they want. I love that you're wearing the T-shirt I got you for your birthday. And then, uh, of course, there's another issue like Trump... Um, how much money do you think they spent trying to catch Trump on his, you know, the Cy Vance? The, talk about civil liberties violations. The, the, the attorney general of New York, is, you know, just does he run for office? I don't know. But like he just like, I'm going to get Trump. I'm going to get Trump. I'm gonna get, there's no crime that he's aware of. This is just a total political witch hunt. They spent tens of millions of dollars for sure. And what do they come up with? They're accusing some people in the Trump organization of like a company car that and, and is a that true? Yeah, yeah, like the most penny ante stuff that basically, you know, every single corporation, you know, can be looked at for how they treat their their perks. And they say, well, they're going to flip Weisselberg. They're not going to flip him on. This is like the mo nobody goes to jail for this stuff. Just the fact that they chart the way this stuff is always handled is they hit you for treble damages and back taxes. That's the way it's handled. <laughs> Nobody's doing time for the fact that they wrote off an apartment. Right. But the thing is, but this is where liberals, this is what gets me. We're living at a time now when the standard liberal position is we shouldn't be incarcerating so many people. People shouldn't even be being incarcerated for violent acts and, and armed robbery and people who vandalize stores. We shouldn't be incarcerating now, what about this this old guy who wrote off an apartment? No, he should be in jail. He should be in jail. fucking hypocrites. Well, first of all, <laughs> because I, we got to get to Trump. Well, what what did Trump do? We don't know, but there must be something. Well, so in America, it doesn't matter. We have, we don't even need prima facie uh, evidence of a crime. We don't like you, so we're gonna get you. I think that I'm sure Trump has done things that he deserves to. Oh uh, yeah, so, 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 so sick. But but on him. I I don't. I'm sure I you don't have too. As a matter of fact, I know you have. I won't say it on. We we know you have. Shut up. And it's actually serious. Shut up. <laughs>
I, I mean, quite serious. Will you stop? <laughs> I don't. I don't think that the liberal position. Is that, <laughs> shut up! I don't think that the liberal position is that people who have committed violent crimes shouldn't be in jail. I think that the liberal position is that you don't want to live in a society that has so many people in prison. I mean, you know that the American prison yeah. industrial complex is like one of the most fucked up ones in the I, in the I, world. I, I think generally a lot of liberal people, and I, I'm, by the way, and I, I'm included, think that we are over- and Now you want to come over to our side. No, are over-incarcerating okay, people. Okay, so then you agree. But 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 I, I agree, except it's, it's, it's kind of a, a yawning chasm that these people- don't say that when it comes to a politician that they happen to not like. Then or they, that, then they, or that they think is corrupt. Up. I don't think it's just that they don't like. Or I, corrupt, yeah. Like, oh, like okay. I mean, it was just as vulgar. It was just as vulgar and disgusting when the Republicans and Trump was saying lock her up about Hillary. Now right. you know what? Hillary probably did break the law with those with those with that email server. That what oh, that was that was that was. That was ridiculous shit, but, but to want to see her in prison? It's no, of ridiculous. Course not. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Trump, on the other hand. Oh, because that's <laughs> why? Because because you hate him. Yeah. By the way, um, don't ever ever let Perial be in charge of anything. My God. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we want to um, conclude, or do we want to discuss briefly a development at Yale University Drama School? Apparently, will be now tuition free. Uh, thanks to a gift by David Geffen of $150 million by Mr. David Geffen. He's Jewish, right? David Geffen is, yes. Um, so, so take that, Ilhan Omar. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now a degree that generally generates zero revenue will cost zero dollars. So it seems like a fairly... Uh, Appropriate sum of money to spend. I don't know. You know, uh, uh, th things that are free are not don't always work out. People don't value things that they don't pay for. Well, all I, all, all I know is that that's true. How much is a Yale drama education? I mean, you know, the people I know that went to Yale drama school are bartenders. Is that true? I know one guy. Yeah, <laughs> this, I know one guy that's a bartender and and a sometime comedian. I know one who's an exec at Disney. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think if you get into Yale drama school, I mean, call me naive, but hopefully that's like got some promise to it. Well, mm -hmm. my fr my friend Neil Mazzello, who owns Hudson Scenic Design, the big um, mm -hmm. stage company, he he went to Yale drama school. He's a super smart, talented guy. Do you know him? Uh, I know Hudson. Yeah, Hudson. Yeah, well, Hudson. Is he successful? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but okay. at, at, at well. drama, is he successful at drama? Well, I don't think the drama school is just acting. He he puts he he builds the stage designs for all the biggest Broadway shows in the world. Oh and wow! The opera, and, wow! And he also built the the glass. M m well, it was twenty years ago, the Millennium Ball, but they still I think they still dropped that ball in Times Square. Or he made the new one. He he up on all the latest technology. Also dramaturgy and and directing. And yeah. So so. Okay. Well, I stand I stand correct. I love how nobody wants to just be like David Geffen's amazing. We're like it's useless anyway. I think it is amazing. I, I just That's I mean, incredible. hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, but people who have money should probably still be paying tuition. I don't know. I, I mean, fine, it's free, it's free, it's great. But All I know is this. Well, I, I didn't realize that Yale Drama School taught other things other than acting. I thought it was just people that wanted to be in actors. But and and maybe maybe theater people, you know, maybe there's a lot of theater people. As far as film and TV is concerned, the people that I know that work in film and TV, you know, Esty, Esty, <laughs> Esty the Booker has done more, has had probably more roles on TV than most Yale Drama School. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, true. You know, so um, Judah Friedlander didn't go to Yale Drama School. What else is in the news? Why don't we just change this Britney podcast Spears? and just discuss the news? Every Britney well, Spears? Well, how come well, well, it's so interesting? Well, first of all, we've already done an hour. Second of all, I, I curate the things that we're going to talk about, and I'm not sure we've exhausted Yale Drama School, but if we have, <laughs> then maybe it's time to bid adieu and keep it short and sweet and tight. Right. Rather than just go on and on and on and say, oh, what, are, what else is in the news that we haven't prepared or thought about? Well, I've been thinking, okay, nobody wants to talk about Britney Spears. I think it's curious that nobody wants to talk, that she wasn't in your well, list, can I tell by the, the way. I, actually, I, I want to say something about Periel's personal life, but I can't say it. Never mind. 
Um, also, um, is there any? Is there? More? I have a friend. Yeah. Who has no idea what her husband's politics are, uh, but I'll try to get her on the show next week. Okay, good. Is there more we'd like to discuss with our dear friend Rob Feld? Rob, now it just seems to me that uh, you hang out here a lot. I, I I get the feeling that you, it, it, at this point, it's only part for your partly for your documentary. Mostly, you just like hanging out. Here. Get away from his wife. Out here. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Did I mention I have two kids? <laughs> no, I do love hanging out here. I mean, it's it's like this rare salon that doesn't exist in New York. You know, you grow up thinking New York's this new Greenwich Village, this idea, and I grew up here, um, and you never really find it until you come here and it's literally people sitting at tables discussing anything and everything and it's you know gnome invites that but 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 how, but how often are people are the comedians discussing interesting things that when gnome is not present uh i mean they're discussing interesting things for them and yeah i mean he wasn't there and, and with colin quinn all of a sudden we're talking about foucault and 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 uh who else I, oh yeah and 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 um james joyce <laughs> and he was like this is the first time it's ever happened it's never gonna happen again but you know the, the topic changes and other things uh, I, I don't know who foucault is somebody Michel told me to, you know, you've told me three times right i you know one of the things about getting older it just, it just doesn't stick it just doesn't I'm stick. I mean, he's one of the most important critical theorists and philosophers in the past hundred years, easily. You would, Don't you look would at not me like, like that. He looks at me like that. He actually would like him okay. because. Okay, no, tell, me, tell me, tell me what he stands for. Don't help her. What does he stand for? Um, eradicating the prison system for starters. Is she right? He had wrote a book called Discipline and Punish. The idea behind it is that Western civilization or civilization tries to. Uh, separate the other and so that can be that could be insane people it could be people who are just different he has I mean, he was gay and had a, a lot of his uh, he was he was a professor at berkeley also and he was hiv positive look it is astonishing to him that like i actually know a thing that's not moronic or a meme that he doesn't know about um don't keep looking at rob to see if i know what i'm talking about i know what i'm talking about and he had sex with a lot of young men and infected them with hiv these are things i didn't know knowingly <laughs> but, but this is one of your heroes and you're uh, worried about cosby <laughs> he the I don't, fuck? I don't know if that's, he's that's, that's, that's a thousand I, times worse than what Cosby I, does. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, I don't know. He's an in the, I'm, 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 well, come on. I, well, I don't think she said he was a Yeah, hero. I don't know. I'm trying to articulate it. You, you know, said he's the most brilliant, blah, blah, blah. He, he may well be. Uh, yeah, you're right, you're right. So was fucking T.S. Eliot. It was a raging anti-Semite. Do you know who he was? Yeah, I've heard of him. Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, Cosby's a fine comedian, I guess. Although I, I don't know much about his stand-up. I loved his TV show. So is Foucault dead? Yes. He died of, of AIDS? Of HIV? AIDS. Um, he died of AIDS, right? What? Uh, that I don't I'm know. I'm pretty I sure he died his, of AIDS. Uh, Why wasn't he uh, prosecuted for infecting... Un I mean, there's a lot of crimes there. Underage boys with I AIDS. didn't say underage. I said okay. young. Yeah, I mean, younger than he was. Oh, okay. Well, he, was very, he was heavily oh, in... Hey, good job. It says Foucault he died in Paris from complications of HIV AIDS. He became the first public figure in France... To die from the complications of the disease. His partner, Daniel de, de how do you say it in French? De, de, I don't de know. Defer, de, 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 de yeah, Daniel de de founded de the AIDS charity in his memory. He um, he was heavily into the leather and S and M scene in San Francisco while he was teaching at Berkeley. All right. <laughs> I, I I I. I mean, he was a fucking genius. All right. I, I I've heard the name. I just. Today, I, you know, I, I just today realized he, it was, he a was a male and not a yeah, female. <laughs> a lot of what he wrote is, is the foundation of critical theory now. Um, well, I'm not sure what critical Derrida, theory is. Derrida, Baudrillard. Stick around. You might learn something oh, She just name me. drops. She does. Right, I, I, Am I wrong? I still don't really. No, you're right. Okay, thank you. Anyway. Um, the 60s. Uh, the 60s. The first. French critical theories. They're amazing. That's that poster you always make fun of when you come over, my Derry dot poster. What does French critical theories mean? We don't have. How did you learn this stuff? I went to graduate school. Remember? Well, we don't know that she learned anything. She just she's thrown out a few buzzwords. <laughs> and, uh, she may or may not have knowledge beyond what would what, what the buzzwords okay. that she's thrown out here. But okay, I went to how many years? Is this? Twelve years. You went to 16? law school. That's useless. Okay, I went to nineteen years of school. And I could probably list on a piece of paper every like what I like. There's, 
there's such a low ratio of what you're subjected to and what stays with you. I don't think I remember anything I learned in college. Well, I, the most important things I learned in, in all my years of schooling that I still use is reading, obviously. Yeah. Typing was very important. Typing was important, yeah. You know, typing was a damn important skill. Um, you didn't learn to read in school. You, you yes, I did. Of course I did. I learned it. Well, you would have learned it anyway. But be that as it may, I learned it in school. Okay. But whether I would have learned it elsewhere, I don't know. Right, you learned, that's second grade. So by, by the second grade, you were reading. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> about it. I mean, math, <laughs> rith 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 arithmetic. I, arithmetic comes in handy, I guess. Arithmetic you know. is important. Um, I mean, I can't even I can't even remember the last time I had to use arithmetic. Well, you have to have an aptitude for it, and then. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know what else I learned in all that schooling. Well, you learned a lot. You just don't recall it. I learned a lot on my own stuff. I stuff I saw. What out about music? You said all self-taught. Uh, I had guitar lessons for a year and a half when I was um, in the fourth grade or something like that. But mostly self-taught, yeah. But hopefully, a lot of university is 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 how to approach learning or how to, you know, express things that you've learned, and it's not. Really, and arguably, it's, not really it, it's, it's it's arguable that learning stimulates. The brain such that it makes it easier to learn new things or makes you sharper just because you did, even if you forgot it, maybe the, the, the aptitude to learn still remains. I, don't, I just think I was too immature. I mean, I, I, I do remember some of what I learned in law school, particularly first semester of law school, and then it begins to trail off. I don't remember anything. I, I can't remember what classes I took my last year in law school. But uh, Really? Yeah. I mean, that stuff's so dry, though, I guess, and, like, <laughs> so fucking <laughs> tedious as opposed to french critical theory yeah as opposed anyway, uh, to french critical theory actually um, but i i just don't remember much of what i've learned and yet i know a lot i'm not saying oh I, I here we go i know i do but i but i don't think i learned well I, you're a voracious reader now too I well, mean, who isn't with their fucking phones I mean, who, who, no but you actually i mean you read like dense Amounts of like news journalism stuff that. Is and anyway, I think uh, <laughs> my wife says, I "Why are you sending me these fucking articles?" <laughs> she says, like, I think uh, <laughs> I said, Juanita, just an article. Why are you sending me these fucking articles? I think now I'm would not be reading a, your a, fucking article as good a time as any to to to, to bid adieu to. Uh, oh, we're still we're still on the air. Well, we're still on the air. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can. Uh, one, we we haven't gotten emails like we used to get a lot of emails we, we, because we don't we can't been announcing the 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 um, well podcast at comedy dot com for comments suggestions questions uh, critique yeah I used to get a lot of emails about from people we, we used to have different guests I guess for I used to get a lot of emails from people like really nice ones about how I was helping them learn to think let's think like like people really I don't, I don't get those anymore now now I don't know they, uh, we, 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 I get those emails now we need to go back <laughs> yeah we need to go back to getting like the 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 uh, the people who've written books and stuff, those guests. What are you, you talking know? about? That's all we do. No, lately we've been. It's I don't know. Well, in any case, these fucking filmmakers. L lately we've been getting a lot of. No, I don't mean Rob. Philosophical <laughs> people. Um, I mean literally, with minor exception, every guest we've had on is somebody who you have. Yeah, but a lot of times it's like the, they're current and then we don't get them on until like seven weeks later. No, 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 that later. happened like twice. No, no, it happened more than that. Sometimes I don't, I haven't. I haven't anyway, uh, thank you, Rob Feld, who is, uh, his documentary, I don't know when it's coming out, but uh, we'll keep you posted. I'll keep you posted. And uh, Perry Ashenbrand. Thank you. Buy her books. The only bush I trust is my own. And On My Knees Available... Where books are sold. Did I tell you my friend alone read both your books? Yeah, he he, lo he loved your books. <laughs> Did you meet him or something? Like, I can't remember. Alone, the black guy, the musician. Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's Elon. Oh, that's Elon. No, t tall Israeli guy. But he, I, I'm not even sure he how he knew about Perry Elba. Maybe he met you somewhere. With, I don't know. I've never met him. I don't know. Well, like, four, five stars from Alone. Yeah. Um, um, those books are apparently good. I'm mean, a little too dense for me. <laughs> In any case. And, you know, <laughs> And Bernie Fabricant, also we'll, we'll a fan. We'll see you next. We'll yeah. see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Okay, let's go downstairs and get this shit tight so that I can be released and go really start um, doing it. Okay, let's go have a 30-minute quick meeting.
Rob, thank you so much. You were great. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, this fun. Bobby, Bobby, now nah, you deserve a tiramisu. I'm gonna go. Wow, Harry go. says Garcia's gonna win. Okay, is that was that a surprise? Oh, Garcia, not yeah. uh, not the other guy.